uh, welcome. We are glad you're here. It's another day, another Monday for the nonprofit show. As we start this week, we are thrilled to have back with us. He's joined us before, but Gong Wong is with us today. He is CEO of Civic Champs and back with us to talk to us about volunteer management and technology. So if you joined us in the green room chatter, you heard a little bit of like AI conversation, a little bit about gaming conversation, a little bit about everything, but it still streamlines into this technology. So Gong, excited to have you back. I think we had you on four or five, maybe even six months ago. So for those of you that are interested, you can go back and see a previous episode where we had you on and, and shared some really great information with us. For those of you that might be joining us for the very first time, we would like to introduce ourselves. Julia Patrick is here. Julia is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. We are so extremely honored because day in and day out, these amazing companies that you can see on the screen have supported us and supported the sector for four years now. Really excited to have their support for the nonprofit show. So thank you. To our friends over at Bloomering, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, Nonprofit Tech Talk, and American Nonprofit Academy. So thank you to all of these companies. Again, they allow us these opportunities, the ones um, that really all over the board, anything that relates to nonprofits, that's what we say is our genre, right? Like we'll talk about anything as long as it relates to nonprofit. And the secret is pretty much everything relates to nonprofits. <laughs> but um, if you missed any of our episodes, we've produced now nearly 900. We'll reach that milestone in October. Here are the ways you can go back and watch or listen to any of those previous episodes, including this one that we are actually recording live and then we'll be up on these platforms. So go ahead and download that app. You can scan the QR code. You can also find us on streaming broadcast and podcast. So again, wherever you like to get your entertainment, you can ask it to pull up the nonprofit show and voila, there we are. Because you know what? Technology is amazing. <laughs> and here we are with Gun Wong, CEO, Civic Champs. You can check out civicchamps.com. Welcome back. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, really excited to have you. Really excited to have your expertise as it comes to technology. For many of our viewers and listeners, Gung, that might not have had the privilege of your introduction of the previous episode, would you please do us a favor and tell us a little bit about yourself as well as Civic Champs? Sure. Yeah. So my name is Gung Wong. Um, as I noted earlier uh, to, to our host here that it's not very phonetic. It's like gung-ho, if that's easier to remember. <laughs> um, I'm the CEO and co-founder here at Civic Champs. So we're a software company. We provide volunteer management uh, software for nonprofits and their champions. And our goal really is to make the most intuitive and impactful version of that software. Amazing. You know, Volunteerism is such an underappreciated, under-researched, underfunded aspect, I think, of nonprofit management. I mean, so, so hmm. shockingly so. And it's, so, it's really wonderful to think that you're invested in this and seeing changes and then helping us on the technological side. So really cool. How old is your company? We are now actually four four years old, a little over four now. Yeah, awesome. getting over our toddler years. <laughs> those nasty toddler years, those nasty. So let's start off and, and I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about this or what are the different types of volunteers? I think we just use the word volunteer and we think it's all the same, but not so much, right? Yeah. I think it's really interesting, you know, going back to what you just said, um, Julia, which is all nonprofits, when we first get started, are volunteer-led, right? Mm -hmm. and, and at some point, they professionalize and certain roles become not volunteers. And we don't, oftentimes, we don't invite those volunteers back into, you know, helping in those areas anymore, whether that's fundraising, whether that's programming, et cetera. But everyone starts as just volunteer-led. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the different types of volunteers, I think, if you think about the whole organization, really, you can have volunteers across the entire spectrum of your mission, 
right? And most organizations don't really leverage volunteers in that way. And so um, I think about it, right? There's there's a couple of big buckets, right? And so there are um, your board members, of course, right? That, that's an easy one. Um, then I would say there's your, let's call it your, um, your almost staff or skilled volunteers. These are the folks that maybe they're uh, actually functionally as the volunteer manager. Some people have volunteers who do fundraising for them, et cetera, right? Um, and then, uh, and then when you come to, you, you know, typically our, our customers, let's call it, um, we see a couple uh, buckets, right? So you have your, um, let's call it the low threshold, high volume volunteers. These are your uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, builders. These are your uh, animal shelter volunteers. These are your um, food pantry folks, right, that you can, you know, come one, come all, it's really easy to be engaged and, and supportive. Uh, and then you have what, you know, your more longer term volunteers. Uh, a lot of times what this might look like are mentors, that that's a very popular one. Uh, you have docents at, at museums, folks that might need require some training, usually. Um, it's, uh, or, or, um, also maybe background checks and things, you know, the process is a little longer. So you need them to be a little bit longer term. Otherwise the investment isn't quite worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and then last but not least, I would say uh, you have your skilled volunteers that might be episodic, right? So these are folks that help you with marketing for a short duration. They might be more interested in skill building as well, uh, career, uh, you know, trajectory. You know, they're they're using this opportunity both to help but also to learn, right? So that's right. you know at a high level, sort of you know the um, let's call it the four or so buckets. You know, I love that you use the word episodic because I think that's really powerful about how you can pull or you need to pull in um, volunteers and volunteer talent. You know according to the to the season or to the the need of the organization mm. and so it's fascinating to kind of step back and look at this um i don't know what what you think Jarrett, but it seems to me that a lot of times organizations um will look at something and, and they'll be like okay how do i keep these volunteers busy yeah. you know and mm -hmm. it's tragic to think that they're kind of helping um fulfill a relationship maybe with a big funder that's also a larger corporation and they want to have some sort of you know staff engagement but it, it doesn't seem like we're fulfilling that promise as well as we could and so i'm i'm fascinated to see if you're seeing that yeah i see that often where it's like oh my gosh we have this big corporate group that wants to come and volunteer their time we yeah. can't say no because what if this leads to a big potential funding opportunity but we need to have something to give them to spend their time which tells me it's never really going to be a true meaningful opportunity right like how can we really leverage their time into this into this way? And you know, I, I have to mention the Giving USA report, right? Like it shows that the financial donations are down, but then the giving of time is up. And so this is the time when we really have to consider how do we engage the individuals as well as the large corporations? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Gung, what do you think about that? Is there a way for technology to um, understand that and 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 connect us back up? Because it seems to me like that is a just understanding your main buckets is a huge concept, and then leveraging that with a system. What does that look like, or what can it look like, and maybe more importantly, what should it look like? I think. You know, when when it comes to uh, corporate volunteers, um, you know, one, one one thought that just came to mind, and I, you know, I'm, I'm I forget where I heard this from. It's not it's not exactly my my original thought, but it for all volunteers and donors, right, for that matter, it's oftentimes about creating those moments that matter, right? Moments that they remember, that's emotional, yeah. um, and you know, what Jared was saying is if you're scrambling to create something that feels inauthentic uh that's that's probably not the moment that you're gonna uh be you know sort of the uh experience that you really want to lead folks with right um and so thinking through uh you know how you can make things impactful and i think there's actually small things you can do 
uh, maybe not necessarily technology related, uh, right? And so, I, for example, you know, if you're at a, uh, you know, a food pantry, right? Instead of just having everyone come and serve food, maybe have them bring in a uh, one item, right? That and, and ask them to bring an item that means something to them and have everyone share that story before, you know, this session. That can be, you know, a, a way to drive, even making something a little bit um, mundane or, you know, not mundane, but like, you know, uh, typical oh, into yes. something that could be emotionally impactful, right? Mm -hmm. um, on the technology side of it, I would say, I think about, the basics, you know, what are the things we want to do with our volunteers? Right? Well, we're recruiting them, we're, re we're engaging them, and then we're trying to retain them, right? And so right. Um, re on the recruitment side, technology can streamline and make all that much more seamless, easy. It feels nicer. And, you know, anything that feels nice, right? Like it's like shopping. When you go shopping, you want to click a button. Like Amazon made this, like this is the easiest <laughs> thing, right? Like you just click a button, you're like, ship it to me tomorrow. And you're like, okay, right. yeah, now I'm done. <laughs> And I've spent so much more money because of that, but yeah. uh, you want to make that experience similar when it comes to recruiting uh, on engagement, right? We have so many tools that allow us to stay engaged, right? Whether that's chat, whether that is, you know, other forms of communication, social media, where you have updates. Well, there's really uh, no reason, right? Uh, nonprofits couldn't use some of those tools to stay engaged with folks, especially as they're not necessarily engaged every day, right? To make, and, and, you know, because life happens. And so maybe I'm a regular volunteer, but I become a parent and now I can't, but I still want to be, it'd be awesome if I could be part of that community. And so I think technology can play a really nice role there. Uh, and then on retention, we're all used to on the, again, on the uh, consumer side to be asked for our opinions all the time, right? You buy something, it's like, did you like it? Would you give us the five stars? You know, you use software. It's like, yeah. you know, will, will you recommend us? You're, you download in the app, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know how many nonprofits have that same feedback loop, right? And so, and this is something that we do at Civic Champs that we allow at the end of a volunteering session to say, hey, Julie, did you, did you have fun? Leave a little reflection, optional, right? But you can say, you know, happy, unhappy, and both are important. You want to find your champions and then you want to intervene on the folks that yeah. may not have had a great experience. So what do you do with that information? So for example, let's say you have, um, I love that feedback because I can't ever think, I never can remember a time when any of my volunteer work uh, was, was queried. I, I'm thinking back. Mm -hmm. you know. But what do you do with that information? Let's, let's say somebody's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't feel valued to Jarrett's point. You or know, I didn't this, feel like an authentic task. Yeah, we, we were doing. Yeah, exactly. So what do you do with that? I think you, re, you know, at a minimum, I would reach out and say, hey, thank you so much for this feedback. We're going to take that into consideration. And next time, you know, or do you have some ideas about well, like what, what would have been more engaging, right? Because um, just like uh, people unhappy with products, if someone's unhappy with your experience, they're going to share that with other people. Right. More and people, probably more, more people. people than if they actually enjoyed it. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, now, having an outlet actually decreases the amount of that sharing because they feel like they got it off their chest a little. Um, so in a, at, at a minimum, that's already helpful. But if you reach back out, right, now you can actually turn things around and say, hey, it's, I've never had any nonprofit or any organization come back out and ask me for my opinion, right? And so that can be actually pretty powerful. Wow. Um, all right, Gunn, Julia warned you, we're very curious by nature. <laughs> and when you're talking about volunteers really feeling part of the community, it made me think about perhaps a volunteer portal. We know about board portals mm -hmm. and how those exist to provide continuous information and education. Are there volunteer portals like in a capacity to continue to engage and foster, steward these relationships with, with volunteers? Is that something that technology, technology has brought to the space? You see flavors of it. Um, I don't know if anyone has done it super well, including ourselves to be to be very uh, transparent, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you have Facebook groups, right? And in many ways, it's it's, it's yes. it functions the same. 
Um, we're introducing uh, chat, uh, group chats, right, as, as, as a way to do that. Um, and we, we're doing this with just our mentorship uh, organizations today, but, you know, we'd like to roll it out across. And I think that could be really interesting way, oh. right, to have uh, an internal communication channel within, you know, core groups or, you know, events, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and then would that I would, be, yeah, sorry to interrupt. would that be something like Slack or Monday, like a, a project management uh, tool where volunteers have a login and there's, you know, they have access to staff and whatnot. It, I've seen Facebook and I've seen that yeah. work well. I've also seen it work not so well. Right. <laughs> yeah. But then are you seeing where other organizations are utilizing something like Slack? I've not seen the nonprofits themselves use something like Slack with their volunteers. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think, right, what'll happen, whether that's with us or with another uh, software provider, right, but having it embedded within like your mobile app yeah. uh, could be really interesting because now it's like, okay, well, I have to use this anyway for my check-ins, for my scheduling. Yeah, and here's that's my, you know, the, the, the best analogy I can think of is for all the parents out there that have kids that do any sports of any kind, you're probably asked to download, Team you know, an snap. app. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and there's only two functions, so it's thinking, or three maybe, right? One is a chat function, right? Yeah. A communication channel. A second is some sort of scheduling. Uh, you, you can see the, you know, what's coming up. And a third is, um, you know, like uh, impact reporting almost, right? Which is like, oh, your kid swam and, and this is their time. Or like, oh, this is the baseball game and they went up to bat and they struck out or whatever it is, right? So there's like, you can see, imagine, uh, for volunteers, it could be very similar. Oh, and who wow. brings snacks? Because that always seems like who brings snacks is like the big topic of any organized sports. That's right. That's right. And what kind of snacks? <laughs> and what kind yeah. Of yeah. They must be organic these days, by the way, Julia. Because yeah, I know I can't. I can't even. Yeah. I can't even. Yeah. Well, you know, it's an interesting thing because I'm fascinated, um, going why, why we don't have this um, discussion more. It seems to me that's how far away we are from understanding how to manage our volunteers yeah i mean it's do you see we, that or, or yeah. what do you, how do you how do you feel that about that we treat volunteers very differently than we treat donors yeah as a sector that's which, probably why which is insane to me because yeah. We just uh, learned that volunteers give 10 times more than donors that aren't also volunteers, right? So like when it, when they're a donor and a volunteer, they give 10 times more. When they're just a donor, and I don't mean just to demean but, that they're also a donor, yeah. you know, is their giving statistically is less. Yeah. So why do we treat them differently? That's that's a well. I mean, you know, mon mon money speaks, right? In its own, um, I I feel like part of it is donors provide a very tangible, uh, immediate value, right? And 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 it's very flexible. It's like you could buy whatever you want. It's it's it solves issues that the organization might have. I think for volunteers, um, that value, you know, depends on the organization, right? Certain organizations understand that. They couldn't function without their volunteers. But even in that instance, they're thinking about them as almost a resource, right? Yeah. As they, yeah. as staff, right? Wow. Just unpaid staff. Um, yeah. And I think there's there's something to be said about, uh, you know, thinking about that as, you know, what is the ROI? Like maybe actually placing more business type concepts and say, you know, when I have, because not all volunteer, you know, to be fair, not all volunteering and all volunteers are actually adding value, right? And and maybe you shouldn't have those uh, programs anymore and really focus on the things that they're gonna be driving a lot of mission and value and experiencing you know, uh, those emotional uh, moments, if you will. Uh, and, and, and you can do a better job of recruiting, engaging and retaining those types, you know, your ideal volunteer, what does that profile look like? Wow. Okay. As we move into our final third of the conversation, 
We have to bring up AI, artificial intelligence. So as we just, you know, are off the heels of technology and we're building into this, can you talk to us about artificial intelligence and the impacts that this may or may not have into our volunteer management platforms and experience? <laughs> If, if, if um, my, my, my sense is like many of the technology trends, it'll take a little while to trickle down to volunteer management is my, my first thought. Um, but that said, immediately, um, there's some great, you know, ChatGPT is the most famous, you know, uh, popular uh, AI tool. I actually think it's a great tool for volunteer managers uh, because oftentimes we're just stuck trying to think of like, well, I need a volunteer handbook. Actually, if you just ask ChatGPT to write one for you, it'll do a half decent job. And it's not that it'll finish it, but it starts it. It starts it. And not looking at a blank screen is yeah. much better than having the blank, you know, paper on screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's really an interesting thing. You know, I feel as though um, we're going to have to educate our volunteers on using these portals and making it more um, just pro forma, you know, that this is how you, this is what you do. Because most volunteers don't just volunteer for one organization. Hmm. You know, they do, it, it, it's an ethos and it's a way that they live their lives and their families, right, do this. So it seems to me that as we navigate this technology and it becomes more of this is what you do and this is how you do it, um, we'll be able to kind of weave some of these things together more efficiently. Um, and this leads me to my last question, and that would be, do you see a separation in demographics, meaning older volunteers who might have more time and, and volunteer a certain way versus younger volunteers, students, things of that nature? You kind of have a, a, a change in the way that behavior manifests itself with technology. Yes, um, this is probably the question we always get every, on, on, you know, when we're doing demos or, or things like that, right, which is, oh, we, you know, we, oh, so many of my volunteers are older volunteers. Uh, and it's interesting because everyone thinks it's unique to them for some reason when in, in reality, everyone's, you know, consistent volunteers are all older volunteers. Um, <laughs> and so we, you know, and I do note that, right, which is like, oh, well, you know, all the organizations we work with ha actually have older volunteers. And so um, I think there's two things. One, you're right, not, you know, there is a level of comfort with uh, certain technology that, you know, your college students will, will always have that's that, like, compared to your older volunteers. But that said, you know, making things accessible is, is really important. And so, you know, things like a kiosk are pretty straightforward, right? And then everyone can, you know, find your name, go tap it and <laughs> tap the sign in button, right? And, um, or, or if you think about tools that you give administrators, right? And so for example, we have um, this mobile admin feature on our app. So it's only for admins and you can see who's supposed to show up. You can check everyone in on your phone. You can sign up new volunteers. And that way, if someone came and they said, hey, you know, I don't want to download your app. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do all these things. Um, you say, hey, no, no worries. I, I can, I can do it for you, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that's those are a couple ways you can make things uh, technology still accessible and 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 helpful. Yeah, yeah, I love that accommodation for individuals that Absolutely. are either you know not going to adopt the technology. And I have to say, Gong, I'm a little guilty of that myself, especially the increase of technology when it comes to conferences. Mm, right, it's mm. like there's more and more and more apps that need to be downloaded. My I feel like, you know, my my phone is a little unorganized. And so I can only imagine, you know, a volunteer coming in and then that's one more thing to do. So if we can remove that obstacle or perceived right. obstacle, right, make that accommodation for them. Again, that to me is customer service. And that's what we want them to take away into their community, into their their dinner parties to say, this organization is amazing and they go above and beyond to make sure that, you know, everything is, is handled. So I appreciate that, that yeah. accommodation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you, in many ways you want to, as a technology company, it's our job to actually help you entice them 
to use right, it, right? there's a reason with right. uh, yeah. yeah yeah very very interesting this well is fascinating you know again as we look at the giving usa data and i know when that came out a month, two months ago, it was very bleak, right? Like people mm -hmm. were all people, uh, all of us were all over the internet just saying like, woe is me. This is, you know, a downturn in our philanthropy trajectory, but really an uptick, a huge uptick in a volunteer engagement and what that looks like. So Gong, we are so appreciative to you and Civic Champs for coming on yet again. Um, for those of you that joined us earlier, you heard that uh, Gung was on probably six months ago, maybe five months ago, again, talking about volunteers, engagement, and what that looks like. So please check out civicchamps.com. Gung uh, started this business, I think you said four years ago. Mm -hmm. And and then, of course, the pandemic happened and a lot of volunteer opportunities kind of shut down. So yeah. really hearing and learning from you has been just so inspiring. I love your um, your ability to just speak very frank about it. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, uh, I, I try, I, you know, we, we try to be authentic if we can. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, I think too, this, it's so odd that we even have to have this conversation and talk about volunteerism in a way that we pretty much should all know, and it should be part of our vernacular and our, and our management process, but clearly it is not. I mean, <laughs> It's such a fascinating thing. And to Jarrett's point, just if you if you back up to Giving USA, who's waving that flag saying, look, hmm. this asset is in, in growing. Yeah. So, but we're not as a sector uh, thinking about that. It seems like we're just looking at that donor and not realizing that this is an amazing cultivation piece. This is an, a strengthening beyond um, maybe what we would ever get with our donors. And so really, really important. Check out civicchamps.com. Super interesting company. Um, you're based in the Midwest? Yeah, we have offices in Indianapolis and Pittsburgh. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jared R. Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. She's the nonprofit nerd. I like to say she's my nonprofit nerd, but she can be yours too. I share. What? you know sometimes thank you <laughs> hey we have amazing presenting sponsors and i always i like to point this out every every once in a while and i should do a better job of it but you know these partners of ours exercise no editorial control so we can bring on who we want and we do we talk about what we want what our viewers and listeners are asking about and so that's really a, a powerful partnership to get this buy-in from these amazing companies and they include bloomerang american nonprofit academy your part-time controller nonprofit thought leader fundraising academy at national university staffing boutique nonprofit nerd and nonprofit tech talk these are the folks that join us day in and day out and they really do make a difference um, in our communities to such an incredible extent. Hey, everybody, we like to sign off every episode with this mantra, and it goes like this. Stay well so you can do well. Thank you so much, you two. We'll see you back here tomorrow.